And this video is a tutorial on the day look I am currently wearing. It's the same look I was referring to in a previous video. I hope you guys get some good tips out of it. It took me 15 minutes to complete. I really do like the result of it. I'll see you guys after. In preparation for the tutorial, I've already primed my eyes and face. My first step here after that is to draw in my eyebrows. So it's not like I need to draw eyebrows from nothing. I'm basically just filling them in. So using the Shu Uemura Brow Sword, I'm just gonna fill them in. so that they look fuller and more even. I'm using the other end of this brow sword to distribute the color without having to add more because I don't want the front parts of my brow to look like it's just a block of color. I want to have that kind of, you know, natural finish or the way you color your brows in to look more natural. Um, if you are going for a more dramatic look or um, if you're going for a more dramatic look or you're trying to imitate a certain style, then you would probably fill that in or you would add more color to it without kind of like what I'm doing, brushing it, brushing it out. Um, I do prefer brows to look more natural, um, especially for this tutorial since it's a daytime look that you can wear to work. With the brows completed, I'm going to start with the eyes. My preference also is to complete my eye makeup first before I put on foundation, concealer, and face powder. And the reason for that is if there is fallout from the eyeshadows, I can clean it up without also wiping away foundation and concealer. Um, for many years, I've actually done foundation or put on foundation and concealer first before I did the eyeshadows, and that's actually worked for me for the most part. Um, but I find that it's just faster, more efficient to do whatever I need for eyes, um, especially if you're working with darker eyeshadows, you're doing a very um, dark smoky eye or you're working with uh, glittery formulas, metallic formulas, and you're doing some very intense color, you're gonna have some fallout, more or less. Um, so that's the way that I've transitioned to doing my makeup and I find that it works uh, for my workflow, my routine. But for this look, you can certainly uh, do all of your face makeup first and then the eyes. Um, I've experienced very little fallout, you'll see in a bit here. Uh, so really it's your own preference, but if you haven't tried putting on eyeshadows first and then your foundation, concealer the rest, I encourage you to try it, right? Try it to see if you like it, how you feel about it. Um, you might find that that works better for you or, or not. So taking the small uh, eye definer brush, it's basically you know, a small blending brush. I'm going to apply, and this is the Viseart One Neutral Matte. I can do a video just talking about this palette or the few Viseart palettes that I have and, and why I really like this palette. Um, 
If you've been doing makeup or into makeup, you probably already have this or once again, you've heard of this. It's a great palette, great neutral palette to have. You've got, you know, this color that you can put under or on your brow bone for some uh, definition and, and having that pop. You can use this for a base color, which is what I'm gonna do in a moment here. Uh, and then you've got these cool neutrals, which are really great to pair with all kinds of look. Uh, a simple neutral look, and you can choose between browns and something that has that is more gray and, and this gray color here, or this cooler orangey red red eyeshadow. Uh, it's kind of hard to see because of the lighting. Um, this is supposed to be a dark matte brown, but it broke and my heart broke <laughs> because of that. I, I took this palette to travel. It broke during one of my trips and it was just not salvageable. So I had to throw it out. It got all over the palette here. Um, dark matte brown, also really, really great for definition or just creating a smoky eye uh, to really darken the colors and create a very smoky look. And then this is a standard matte black. So overall, a great palette, um, powdery formula, but very easy to work with, high payout, high color payout, and if you take the precautions, basic precautions like tapping your brush a few times or dabbing it on a um, tissue paper before you apply, you're gonna get very, very little fallout. So let me put some on first. And I, again, I'm dabbing onto this color because I do want some base color all over the lid and actually all the way up to the brows. I'm just gonna make sure I've got even distribution here. Also, when you're holding your brush, it's helpful or it's, there's more flexibility if you hold it closer to the top rather than like a pencil at the bottom here uh, because it gives you more control and more flexibility. And it's easier to control how much pressure you're applying on your lid and even on your face. You'll see in a moment when we get there, but um, on your lid, if you apply more pressure and if you wanna do that, you can, you just consciously have to think about, okay, I'm gonna apply it with more pressure. Naturally, when you hold it up this high, your pressure is going to be lighter and that's what you want. It's easier to apply more color than it is to apply too much color and having to either wipe it off or um, spend time buffing it out. Uh, in the interest of this 15 minute makeup tutorial, um, I, you, you'll see why you want to just light-handedly apply these colors. So see here. Um, Okay, so now that I have, once again, the space color, I'm ready to apply color to uh, my crease. I'm gonna take this eye crease brush and I'm gonna use a slightly more pigmented color and then tap here. I also dabbed it on tissue. Because of my skin tone, it doesn't really, you know, pop out as a whole bunch of color, and that's intentional. Um, again, with this look, it's fairly light. I would say it's maybe even almost like a no makeup makeup look. Make sure that's even. <laughs> I prefer to tap it on the sink so it doesn't get all over the floor. Because my bath mat is white and it's right underneath me. Okay. 
All right. Okay. Uh, I know that, you know, I, I said at first I'm applied all over the crease and then it's all over the lid. Uh, that's actually what I wanted. You can apply this color just to your crease if you wanted to, but I do like it all over. Using the same brush, I do not recommend, it isn't the best thing to do to keep using the same brush for every single color. However, the next color I'm going to use is this kind of orangey, red brown color and maybe it's like a terracotta type of color but i'm going to use this color and after this any other colors that i'm applying on my eyes are going to be darker so actually you'll see i'm not going to even use this brush anymore two reasons i'm not going to use this brush anymore after i apply this color um, therefore i'm not worried about mixing the two since this is darker than this one and this one. Uh, second is I'm actually gonna use a different brush for the last um, portion of this tutorial. So I'm comfortable with using the same brush, but if you're say using, you know, I was just using this color here, I'm gonna, I actually don't recommend, like I would actually change to a different brush because these two are too different you're gonna get some of the some of this color mixed into this and that's not that's probably not the result you're aiming for um, and then if after i use this i'm gonna go back to my crease and blend out some more and it's a lighter color for example you don't want to do that either for the same reason that you don't want the color to mix uh, in this case Again, this is why this is a 15 minute get ready. Um, if you do this look more often and you get really good at it, it'll probably take eight minutes, 10 minutes. So once again, I tap it. We've established that I'm just gonna use the sink. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm gonna apply it all over. Not, I'm actually gonna stop short before we get to the crease. I just wanna make sure this is even. All right, next I'm going to use Charlotte Tilbury's uh, Rose Gold Eyes to Mesmerize. It is a cream eyeshadow product. It goes on, it is a wet texture, it goes on wet, but then it dries into more powdery, powdery to the touch. The finish is very shimmery and it does have this kind of wet effect you'll see um, this is what it looks like kind of and when you blend it out it has that nice shimmer um, again because of my skin tone you'll see here it kind of blends in and especially the color base that i use this is intentional right i i want to kind of rosy pink kind of rose gold eye look and so that is why I use the colors that I use from Viseart and I'm going to top it with this rose gold because I want there to be some interesting texture to my look um, I could have just stopped after applying that last color from Viseart and then go on to foundation everything else but I want something interesting to look at, um, you know, some more texture. And that's kind of how I think about doing my eyeshadows lately. Matte looks are great, are beautiful, they are timeless. But adding a little shimmer here, adding dimension is always 
interesting and fun. Uh, again, if you wanted more, more shimmer, you could add more. It blends very easily. You don't want to wait too long because once it, it completely sets, it's not going to be the same. It won't be as easy to add to and to blend out. So you want to complete the step before completely before you move on. All right. Now I'm going to use Sephora's Pro Packing Brush. The reason I am using this brush, uh, there are many, many uses, but I tend to use it to add color to the corner of my eye. Uh, you can, and when I do add color, you'll see, uh, I, you know, I start from here, but you can use the tip of it to add some definition here if you wanted to. And it's just the right size, so that is why. I chose this brush. Now, next I'm gonna use Viseart for Dark Matte, and we're gonna go in with this color. Uh, the reason for this color is we're staying with kind of, well, we're staying with the neutral theme, but I figured the terracotta and rose gold shimmer is gonna go well with another brown or this is the first brown, but it will go well with the brown. So dab it lightly, like that, and then we're gonna go in. Again, holding the brush higher towards the end of it. I just noticed that there was some eye primer down below. I'm gonna fix that, I'll be right back. All right, so now, with the darker color applied to the outer corners of my eyes, I'm gonna use this, let's focus here, um, MAC 217 blending brush. You can use this for the crease too. Uh, it's a fluffy, and I'm just gonna blend out here. Okay, time for foundation. This is my Dampen Beauty Blender, the All Hours YSL foundation, and this is B30 Almond. this kind of bouncing motion helps the foundation to be absorbed into the skin better and it would mean longer lasting makeup. And you wanna make sure you don't stop at right here, you wanna go just so you get it. So there isn't that line when people, when you're looking on the side of your face, make sure the hairline. Okay. 
Next, I'm going to take Shape Tape Concealer for under the eyes and highlighting. So, not to avoid placing it too high because it could make your eyes look crepey, especially as as it as your skin kind of dries throughout the day. Um, but I'll put some here to make sure we're well blended in. And then um, I, I do wear glasses when I'm not wearing contacts and so you can kind of see the imprint here. So I'll put some to even out the color and then any redness I might have, you know, acne, good times, good times, um, around the chin. And then any darkness around the lips here too, you could just lightly Then going in with the Beauty Blender and the pointed end, I'm going to start blending this in again with this bouncing motion because it will blend very nicely and it will stay put. It will help it stay put. Uh, when I blend out here, kind of follow this line because that's how you make your eyes look bigger and brighter. And then I'll use the dome side of it to blend out here. You don't need to do any intense conceal work where I'm just, you know, dabbing this one spot because there's a zit. Um, I do have some acne that are kind of fading, so it's mostly just red. So in that case, I don't need to, you know, if I applied some concealer and blend it like this, it it just, it hides it pretty well, evens up the skin tone. Um, uh, this will look pretty bright, that's the whole idea. You wanna brighten up your eyes, your forehead, your nose. I didn't put too much, I just kinda dabbed it and, and moved it around, uh, around your mouth. You can apply concealer to other areas depending, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, sorry about that. Um, you can apply concealer to other areas of your face to brighten it up if, if that's what, you know, if you have areas you want to brighten up. So you can actually do a little triangle here and bring it all the way down. You could apply concealer um, here, you know, to these places. Uh, concealer to here really helps with, you know, if you do have some fine, fine lines that you want to kind of fill in with concealer. That's an option too. Uh, you could add it here, just to brighten that up. But for, again, this day look, I'm keeping things pretty straightforward, simple. All right, with concealer done, I'm gonna apply uh, all over face powder. Ooh, it's bright. This is the 100% Pure Bamboo Blur Powder. And I like kind of the natural ingredients uh, in this powder, which I will provide a link below. Oh, wait. Before we do that, I'm gonna add a cream blush. Okay, so for the cream blush, I'm gonna use Stila. This is Lilium. I've gotten lots of use out of this, <laughs> as you can see. And to apply Lilium, I have some options. Um, I can use a foundation concealer brush. I can use the Beauty Blender. Um, I actually normally use this guy, kind of these drugstore disposables. Uh, and they've worked actually very well for me over the years. I'm just on the apples of the cheek. Lilium is, is great because it gives you that blush look, but it's very light and it goes very, very well with all kinds of eyeshadow colors. 
So I'd say for my skin tone, it's very universal. And I, I do think it will work nicely on lighter skin tones as well. And perhaps even richer skin tones because it's such a easy color. So it's hard to make a mistake with Lilium. Um, unlike more pigmented cream shadows, the way that I'm dabbing it and I put it, it would just be like stamp, stamp, just way too much, way too much product. But with Lilium, it's so light and easy that you get just enough color. Okay, now I'm ready for all over face powder. And the brush I'm using is Sephora Pro Flawless Light Powder. Uh, it is a synthetic brush and I believe the number designation is 50. So just a real fluffy brush. We'll quickly go over your face. Uh, what I didn't do beforehand is actually to set the concealer under my eyes. Uh, and I'm using this Hakuhodo plus Sephora um, kind of collab. And it's really great for under the eyes application. Add some to there. I used to apply the under eye powder with this and I just always picked up too much product or not enough or it's just so big that it's either too much product or too little and you know I'm missing missing some areas under my eye. Um, I don't want my concealer to kind of start fading or moving because it's very noticeable and the kind of the darker colors underneath, once it's exposed, you're gonna look tired. Your makeup is, no matter you know how generally intact it is for the, on the rest of your face, you're gonna look tired, you're gonna look like, hey, your makeup's coming apart. Maybe other people or most people can't tell, but I can tell and it really bothers me. So it's really important that I set my under eye concealer properly. If I'm gonna wear, wear makeup, I want it I want to walk out the door knowing that, you know, I've, I've done everything to make sure it lasts throughout the day and that it, it looks good. So this is a great shape. It's very fluffy and soft. And it brushes very, brush very lightly. Um, I am holding this actually closer to the brush head uh, and it's still, it's very light. It's very soft. Uh, it helps to make sure there's no excess powder under the eyes because if there is and you're not you don't really know you don't see it and you go out you take photos especially with the flash on it's just <laughs> white powder here or it, it looks okay on one side and then it's like white here mm, can't use that photo can't use that photo so uh, you, you want that to be blended out nicely good coverage and you, um, it's evenly under the eyes. After that, I'm gonna apply blush, powdered blush on top of the Lilium and face powder. I'm gonna use this MAC angled brush. This is the 168. It's pretty faded. I've had this for many years. And then the blush that I'm gonna use is Tarte Exposed. So Lilium, that cream blush, gave kind of a, a glow from underneath. And then exposed, adds more color. You could stop here, put some mascara on, and you're done. Um, but I'm going to show you a few additional steps that you could do. So one of the things you could do is um, add highlighter on top of this finished look 
to give yourself more glow, more texture, something interesting or additionally interesting. You know, when you kind of turn your face here, you can, you can see that shimmer. Um, so I'll do that. I'm gonna use Natasha Denona's Diamond and Blush Palette and Glow Extreme, this color here. It's actually, it looks subtle and this is okay. You can also add more to amp it up. But I'm adding to the kind of the tops of my cheekbones on both sides, very lightly. The sides of my forehead, right above the brow. Nose, a bit on the chin, chin, a bit here, a little bit of a glow. Okay. And the other thing you could do is put lipstick on. Um, I will do that. So, lip liner or not, optional. Although I do like a good lip liner look. And this is the Makeup Forever Aqua Lip. Now I'm going to add some actually lip paint. So this is a matte finish from uh, Tarte. It's Park Ave Princess. They don't have, I think this color was a limited edition, they don't have it anymore, but you could use any neutral lip. You could actually use a bright coral lip if you wanted to uh, and make your lips pop and everything else kind of complements around that color, but I'm keeping everything pretty neutral. Okay, so finally, I'll also add some lip gloss. That is also optional. Again, it adds some dimension to the lips. If you wanna keep this to a matte look, that's great too, just as beautiful, so totally up to you. Um, two more final steps here. You could also add some of this or whatever topper shade you decide to use right on the lash line below. Also gonna put some in the corner. I love how versatile and easy it is to use, especially this color. Could you tell I put a little bit more or my, you know, was uneven how much I dipped, how much product? Not really, because it blends so easily. I am done here. I'm gonna put on some mascara and I'll be right back. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Everything I've used today, I have in the description down below. See you guys next time.